Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a look at a massive Intermountain release, the Tier 4 Jeevos in the Canadian National Heritage Schemes, the Veterans Scheme, and also CSX Scheme here. So, let's take a look at what you get in the box from this latest Intermountain release next. Okay, so the box, clear front, flap on the side. If you've been in model railroading, you know how this works. There's a clear sleeve and an operator's guide in the back. The sleeve will typically stay in the box unless you pull it out. So, as you can see, I can start sliding that sleeve out. But the operator's manual, or operator's guide as they call it, talks about factory resets. It talks about really quite a bit um, DC, DCC operation. Talks about the CVs and shell removal instructions. Okay, once that's out of the box, peel the plastic shell off the front and you see all this baggie of stuff. You've got several things in here. A full set of handrails, front, back, sides, and all. Grab irons. And the bearing caps for the wheels that rotate because sometimes they pop off. So it's pretty cool to include all of that extra in case you need an extra set of handrails. To get this locomotive out You've got to look at some screws towards the bottom. And on the bottom here you see these two sets of screws. And I know my fat hand is in the way, but all I'm doing is packing these out. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. And eventually you feel the locomotive start to loosen now. It's best to do that upwards when you finish this off so that it doesn't take a hard fall to the rear. I know uh, I'm zoomed in way too much for this, but basically once you have loosened those screws, the locomotive is released and those screws will stay in place as long as you don't back them out too far. Okay, here's how we're going to do things considering we have eight locomotives. I'm going to quickly, and I mean quickly, point out some features on this Tier 4, and then I'm just going to Vanna White 360, the other ones. If you want my full review on all of the features, check out my original Intermountain Tier 4 review. On the front, there are ditch lights along with this other light here. I think it's an emergency stopper. You guys can tell me what it is. I, I'm bad at that stuff. I'm going to zoom in a little more though so you can see this better. Silver tipped MU hoses. It looks like a KD long shank metal coupler on there. Grab irons. Sand filler hatches on the nose. Antenna configuration on the roof. Sunshade. Really nice window tent. Intermountain does the best window tent in the industry in my opinion. Jacking pad here. You've got your rotating bearing caps on the trucks. The E-bell mounted on the front of the hood. You can see sanding lines there as well on the trucks. The sight glass and emergency fuel shut off. Dynamic brake fans, more grab irons there. Horn, all your compartment detail. Exhaust. Towards the back, there's the truck chain, the brake chain there. It's connected to the shell, brake wheel on the back, radiator fan grills on the rear, got your handrails, are pretty nice and straight, they probably didn't have to include a second pair but they did, and you can see your see-through grating on your walkway, 
to help with snow passing through so it's not accumulating on the walkways for the crew. Rear sand filler hatch right under the rear lights. The lights are LEDs, of course. MU hose, accessory hoses, spare coupler knuckles there on the bottom too. And your brake line hose is a separate hose with some really nice detail on that end. And your metal coupler, coupler cut lever also sticking up as a loop on each side there. Entryway to your rear stairs, more radiator fan grills, more fuel tank detail here on this side with some reservoirs and another sight glass and another emergency shutoff. Jacking pad up front, CN and the IPO 25 celebrates when they first became public in trading I believe. And you've got your window sunshade and such there on that end too. So that's a 360 of the tier fours. Now you're going to get a real 360. You're just going to see some of the differences and we'll turn everything around one after another. Here's BC rail. Same ditch light configuration with that other light up top. I notice the paint is a shade brighter than what I've seen on other Canadian National units by other manufacturer, but I believe uh, after looking at some photos it's really interpretive. Like the more light you have, the lighter it looks, the less light you have, the darker it looks. It's really hard to nail. But there's your BC Rail 360. Here's Wisconsin Central. Again, same light configuration on the ditch lights. A lot of what I already talked about is here. One thing I'll say about these locomotives is I unboxed eight of these. And I'm not crazy about the packaging because it's a little bit of a pain to unscrew, but not one had broken parts. I had one horn dislodged, fix that out of eight items and that was it. Here is Illinois Central, the Death Star up front. Really like how that paint plays off on that locomotive. It's nice and dark. It's not glossy. It looks good. And again, a lot of the features we mentioned, just that Illinois Central simplistic paint scheme, which is just really beautiful on a locomotive like this. Here's the 100th anniversary unit here. I believe they have these in two road numbers available. And you'll also notice on some of these the exhaust. So some of them they had the angled exhaust, some of them were blocked in and they've got that accurate per which Heritage unit has which. I'll zoom in so you can see the nose art here. Really nicely done locomotive. Paint is very nice. Here's another one, the military unit, veterans unit. It's got Canadian, basically French on the side. Thank you very much for your service, for example, on that radiator. You've got the Canadian flag and the U.S. flag crossed there. Camouflage, paint scheme. And they did a really nice job applying that camo to the grates as well. And again, a slanted exhaust and a yellow ribbon. Beautiful, beautiful unit. North America's Railroad there under the battery box doors. Really nice unit. Last but not least, the two CSX units. You will see a difference on the ditch lights here. You don't have that other light above this right ditch light. There were not um, extra 
handrails in these packages for the regular CSX units. But again, very well executed. That beautiful dark tint that matches perfectly. Looks great with that CSX blue. Modern antenna array up there. PTC silver sight glass on the fuel tank. Just a beautiful locomotive in the CSX scheme. Okay, let's see what this weighs. These are very hefty locomotives. Wow, 26 ounces. Guys, that's 736 grams, almost uh, two pounds. It's a pound 10 ounces, you know, so uh, 10 sixteenths of the way to the second pound there. 226 uh, ounces total again, like I said, so very hefty locomotives, which does usually equate to pulling power, but we'll see that later on. Okay, so I have one of my favorite schemes of the Canadian National Heritage Unit here. Heritage Units, it's the BC Rail. I think it's just one of the most vibrant with the colors. So we'll choose that to start off with and go over some of the sounds. And just so you know, the Inner Mountain Manual has several of the functions listed. And I will be using that to assist in covering some of the functions of this decoder, which is an ESU low sound decoder. People that are familiar with ESU know that you can't really do a whole lot with sounds without pressing F8, which is the startup sequence. Let's listen to that now. Okay, we've got the bell. Just so you know, out the gate, this sound is not overtly loud. A lot of discerning model railroaders don't want the sound too loud because there are scale factors to consider. Like if the sound was really loud, you know, down the scale, it'd be like blowing out people's windows and stuff. So this seems to have that kind of considered into the factor of volume. But obviously with configuration variables, you can change all of that. But here's Bell. Here's the horn that's programmed in. And it also uh, will automatically trigger the bell. And uh, for the correct units, it's going to have flashing ditch lights, which we'll check that out. Three's coupler. Four is dynamic brake fan, which you may have to get when you're moving. Five is uh, number board lights. Six front ditch lights. Seven is rear ditch lights, or I'm sorry, uh, F6 and f forward is front ditch lights, F6 and reverse is rear ditch lights, and we'll look at the lighting in a different segment. F7 is dimmer, which is also with uh, lighting, F8, as I mentioned before, starts up and shuts down the prime mover, F9 is drive hold, by pressing F9, whatever speed it's at is where it'll stay regardless of throttle response, but it will adjust the prime mover RPMs. F10 independent brake, F11 walk light, walkway lights, 12 DPU rear and forward, 12 in reverse is DPU uh, on the front, 13 radiator fan, 14 handbrake, let's see if I can uh, trigger some of these here, there's an electric handbrake, sounds like kind of a ticking. Um, isolation switch 15, GE air dryer uh, on shut off, shut down, off on 16, 17's brake set, 18's sanding valve, 19 short air let off, 20's air compressor, 21 GE modern air dryer, 22 cab door, 23 
engine compartment doors, 24 reverser center, 25 is load mode, used when operating with a sound unit, uh, 6 is manual notch up, or 26, 27 is manual notch down, 28, manual notching logic on, using 26 and 27 to notch up and down, 29 is shutters open and close, 30 is automatic brake, 31 is fade out sound. So there are some definite uh, differences on this decoder. With 31 functions listed. A lot of these we're not going to be able to test due to time. We've got a shift to lighting, which we will do next and show you that. Okay, you can probably barely see the locomotive. We're going to hit F0, which is the headlight first. Then we're going to move down all the different lights. F5, number board. You see those come on. Those look nice. There's no visible shine through. Beautiful color temperature in my opinion. Then we're going to go to F6 and forward, which is the front ditch lights. We're going to go ahead and hit the horn. And as you can see, they have uh, solid non-flashing dish lights, which I think is correct. Um, and then the CSX one, which we can test later, later, would have flashing ditch lights. We're not done yet, though. We still have more lighting functions. The, when it's in forward, you can put on the rear red DPU light, which is those lights I wasn't uh, explaining very well earlier by hitting F12. So there's, when you're in reverse, the front one's going to be on, and when you're in forward, the rear one's going to be on. So there's that red DPU light. Still not done. More lighting features baked into this. Walkway lights on F11. You see that pop on right outside of the DPU light. Turn off the DPU light, and you can see the walkway light there shining in between the stanchions on the front. There's also going to be walkway lighting on the rear. You can go ahead and swing around to that. You can see it peeking in between the ditch lights there. So those are your walkway lights on the locomotive. So as you can see, these lights shine really nice on the track. Very good color, color temperature, as I mentioned before, and a nice, bright, even light. You don't see different colors between the ditch lights and the headlight or the number board lights. Really good job with the lighting. Nicely done. I don't see a ground light uh, that shines down off the truck. Probably with the uh, lighting features such as the DPU light, they might have run out of uh, functions on the decoder or I'm missing something, but that is essentially the lighting functions of this locomotive. Now we switch to CSX here, as you can see, just beautiful unit. That dark window tent up against that blue is just beautiful. But when I hit the horn, these ditch lights should flash because it's CSX. And as you can see, they do flash. So flashing ditch lights on the correct road names as uh, they do on the prototype, so they're they're on their A-game in terms of lighting features on that. Okay, we have our AccuTrack 2 speedometer. I don't have sound running for a reason. I want you to listen to engine noise, like motor noise, and it's very, very quiet. This is speed step 1 out of 128 on my NCE Pro Cab. We're going to get a speed registered here, but very whisper quiet motor. So for folks that like to run on DC or run with the sound off on occasion, it's very, very quiet. So you're not going to get a whole lot of sound from that. 1.1 scale miles per hour is almost the perfect you know, rating for a one speed step. So one, each speed step is almost one scale mile per hour. That's exactly how I'd want to program that out of the box. And you saw how smooth that was. There's no jerkiness in forward as you can see, but I will remove the speedometer so you can see it one more time in forward. As you can see, very, very smooth. You can see those 
bearing caps on the wheels rotating. I'll show you that by zooming in a little more. Those rotate and look very realistic and you can just see how smooth it is at one speed step and we'll check reverse too at one speed step without sound but you know you're right up against this locomotive if there's any sound at all with this Dolby surround sound microphone you might be picking up a humidifier way on the other side of the room but there's nothing coming out of this locomotive a dehumidifier I should say <laughs> you don't want to make a train room more humid that's for sure but see look how smooth that is so just uh, the impeccable operation of these long-term reliability Intermountain is one of the manufacturers I've had the least amount of issues with. I don't know if I've ever had to uh, return a Intermountain locomotive for anything that was manufacturer was responsible for the manufacturer. I broke something one time. I needed a handrail, but uh, motors are always long-lasting, and uh, it's hard to capture that in reviews. But over time, I develop a sense of each manufacturer and the reliability, and Intermountain is definitely up there on reliability. Okay, you may be asking why are why am I switching these locomotives out so often? It's simply so you can see all the different schemes as we do this review, but you'll also see different schemes on some Facebook exclusive videos and on uh, YouTube Shorts. I'm going to spread out some different videos on these locomotives. So we're pulling again with no sound. These are sound equipped, but I wanted you to hear the motor. What you're hearing now is the grind of the wheels on the rail, but the motors just whisper quiet. We're peaking out at about 4.5, 4.6 ounces. So that's about 70, 67, 68 cars um, of regular HO scale freight. So that's pretty good for lo one locomotive because two, you're going to be able to pull really long consists of 100 plus cars. So I'll hit eight here again. So you know it has sound. But yeah, all of these have sound, and I just wanted you to hear that whisper quiet motor, so that's why I didn't run it. I picked the J unit, not only because we're running out of units to show you, but this has also got really light colored trucks, so I can point out one of the critiques of these models I've seen online before, and that is that the trucks ride kind of uh, high, or the body rides high off the trucks, kind of making an O scale appearance, and I gotta tell you guys, I'm not seeing it, but let, don't let your... Uh, ears be the judge let your eyes be the judge like maybe a tiny gap i'm not seeing much unless impeding function and then this is dead on from the side this is that look uh, nine times out of ten we're filming at a different angle if you change that angle at all if you move it this way it's gonna go away even more and if you move it up my old tripod is very squeaky but if you move it up it really just kind of eliminates that angle at all so you know you're gonna have to be at a dead side angle to even notice any sort of gap really to speak of and it's millimeter maybe a millimeter difference from anything else I've seen in the industry so I don't think it's a problem but I did want you to see that side angle so you can determine for yourself because when you look up stuff online Nine times out of ten on the forums, you're going to get negative aspects, not positive. So I wanted to acknowledge those, but show you what I'm seeing. All right, from this angle looking down, you can see the see-through grating on the walkways. Again, that's to help with snow not accumulating in the winter, as Canadian National runs, shocker, mostly in the north and Canada. Northern United States as well. Here's the Illinois Central, which you didn't get to see much of that I wanted to show you now and the 100th CN unit, but all of these have the see-through walkways on the Canadian National. Now let's look at one other thing on the CSX, magically, there's no see-through walkways and graded walkways, and the reason is CSX did not incorporate that feature into the Tier 4s, so that is a Canadian National feature. Well guys, I hate to bring this to an end, but that wraps up our review of the Intermountain ES40 or ET44s or Tier 4s. They've got a bunch of different variations of the Tier 4s. But these locomotives very well executed, reliable metal couplers, beautiful lighting. All these locomotives, eight total, I found one horn that had 
coming out came out of its little plug I plugged it back in and we were good to go so no real broken parts uh, that packaging is annoying as it can be sometimes to unscrew screws on a locomotive it is keeping those locomotives secure and free from harm so again you'll see some of these on YouTube shorts and Facebook later on facebook.com forward slash HO scale product reviews be sure to check it out because most of the time you guys just see me on here but I'll leave you with a run by of some of these in a power move and we'll see you next time right here on the channel take care